Hey everyone, in this beginner tutorial we're going to take a look at the basics of object selection and transformation. Transformation consists of movement, rotation, and scale, which we'll get into later. We'll also look at selecting multiple objects and animating position change. Let's start with basic selection. To enable the selection cursor, you can click on the icon in the toolbar or use the Q hotkey. Notice that when different objects are selected, the Modify panel on the right will change to the properties of the selected object, and you will be able to see it selected in the Scene Manager to the left. If you select one of the tools to modify your object, such as Move, Rotate, or Scale, then you will need to double-click to change the selected object. Move can also be activated with the W hotkey. Rotate uses the E hotkey, and Scale uses the R hotkey. The main camera functions are Zoom, Pan, and Orbit, which are also on the toolbar. You can also scroll the mouse wheel to zoom, hold Alt and left click to pan, and hold Alt and right click to orbit the selected object. If you have selection toggled on, and click and drag a selection box from the top left, then any object that has contact with the selection box will be selected. However, if you do the same and drag from the top right, then the entire object will need to be encompassed by the selection box for it to be selected. You can see that if only half of the prop is covered, then it won't be selected. You can also select objects from the Scene Manager directly. If you want an object to be non-selectable, toggle on the lock icon beside it. If an object is locked, then you won't be able to select it. If you want to multi-select objects, simply hold the control key and click in either the scene manager or directly from the viewport. This allows both objects to be manipulated simultaneously. You can select a range of objects in the scene manager by holding the shift key and select an object further down. The whole range of objects between will then be selected. If there is a hierarchy between two objects, box selecting will only select the parent object in the viewport. You can select the child object separately in the scene manager or by double clicking in the viewport. Ok, that covers selection basics, let's look at basic transform options. Once again, the move tool can be toggled using the W hotkey. This will bring up a gizmo that allows you to move along the X, Y, and Z axes which correspond to the colors red, green, and blue. There are also boxes between these axes that allow you to move along two at the same time. The E hotkey will toggle the rotation gizmo. If you click anywhere in the rotation sphere that is not an axis line, you can rotate in multiple directions. However, if you click on one of the axis lines, it will lock your rotation to that axis. Scale is activated with the R hotkey. You can scale uniformly by using the yellow box in the middle, or lock the scaling to a specific axis. When it comes to move and rotate, it's important to note that there is both a local axis and a world axis. The world axis is shown at the scene root, which is indicated by the color-coded lines in the middle of the scene. Right now, the world and local axes are both the same. However, if we rotate the object slightly, you'll see that now, if we choose Local Move, that the gizmo will be offset according to the amount we rotated it. We can then move it along the local axis, which is according to the prop itself. The same goes with rotation. When an object is first added to the scene, its local and world axes will be the same by default. However, if we rotate it slightly, the local axis will then be different. You can toggle between local and world axes by pressing the E or W hotkeys more than once. Ok, finally let's take a brief look at some simple animation. I'll open up the timeline via the button on the play bar, and you can also use the F3 hotkey. You can click and drag the playhead at the top of the timeline, or manually enter a frame. I'll start at frame 0 here, and move my object a bit on the red X axis. I can also manually enter the value in the Transform section of the Modify panel. I'll then drag the playhead to frame 100 and move my prop to a different location on the X axis. This will create a keyframe in the timeline at frame 100, which indicates the Transform position change. 
If I play back, you can now see the simple movement animation. It's important to note that move, rotate, and scale values are all stored in the transform track of your timeline. As an example, if I set a different rotation value at frame 0 and play back, then the prop will rotate as it moves, and end at the rotation transform value of 0 that was set by default earlier when we set the transform position keyframe. I can change the end transform position of my animation by entering an x value of 0. When I do, the animation will end up at the scene root. The same thing goes for scale. That's it for this basic tutorial on selection and transformation. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.